Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up everyone? It's Dove back today for a new world video about the red strategy, just how it's supposed to happen. This video, it's the video that you're gonna link to your friend who need help in this dungeon and need just to understand the, the simple basic mechanic. I'm gonna explain from a healer POV, but I'm gonna speak about the DPS and the tank POV because I do every role in this thread. So I'm just gonna tell what what every people should be doing and uh, from the healer POV. So yeah, let's get straight into it. I feel like the healer POV is one of the best angle to see your teammate and see whatever is happening. And the healer is one of the most important and crucial world uh, role in your world because if you are just there and healing, you are not using your Void Gauntlet. And the Void Gauntlet got not only some empower building, but a 15% ran that if you don't apply, it's impossible to get it from anywhere else. This is really important to have some Void Gauntlet in your team. And the healer doesn't need to have like, 500 focus or something it's useless so if you put like 150 intel the rest in focus and con like 350 focus 150 intel and the rest in con it's already a good starter and then you can lower your con in the future and add more intel but add in that 150 intel in your build and then going with the void blade gonna change everything for your group just believe me and having a bit of harnessing if it's possible like if you have a void blade like if you don't like have a diamond in your void blade you're gonna go with like void harnessing uh, if the creature is angrier as an example you can go with the fire harnessing build and put a ruby into your your void blade so yeah make sure to use this at your advantage so let's get straight into the gameplay because this is not a build guide video okay so at the start uh, you're gonna see a lot of tank in this group i feel like uh, everything is fine for this but i'm still gonna say it because i feel like it's something that you're gonna see a lot and you need to make sure that it's not happening at the start of the fight you're gonna see a lot of tank not going in front of the boss like just why are you not standing in front of the boss it just make no sense to me do you want to kill your dps by standing on top of your dps at the start like bro okay and then Sogon, you're gonna see uh, the healer can just put a sacred ground at the start and go with the void blade like there's no reason for the healer to just stay there and keep healing like the during the first phase there's no empower and the the boss hit like a pillow so ju just give him a simple heal here and here and go all in void blade dps it just makes no sense if you're just there healing and then you're gonna see uh, there's a lot of time some dex user with like a pvp build that just stay away like really really far from everything and it just make everything harder for everyone like if that dude that is in the corner right there was standing closer with us not only he would be able to benefit of the oblivion and gain some empower but maybe he would be able to land some headshot or use his rapier but right now he is so far that he is if he's getting trapped into a cage it's gg for him and he probably don't have a rapier build good enough because he just want to escape with it his rapier build is not even good enough to get him out of of the torn and you see there's an archer with a great sword the great sword is scaling more of strength than dexterity so this build is so wrong that you better just go for the great sword instead so you will see since the the other healer is healing i'm solely just focusing on void blading because why would 
why healing when my team don't need heal this is what mattered the most to me like it, i need to heal when they need heal if they don't need heal i need to be void blading it's really really simple look i'm just there void blading why would i be healing right now it just makes no sense You see, with the AV attack, you can launch yourself on the the bus. So the AV attack sometimes can be a good thing. The torn are really easy to dodge. You're gonna see every time that the torn happen, the bus is like put him his hand into the ground. The animation is really easy to see. Mostly if you are close of the bus. If you are really far away from the bus, maybe you're not gonna be aware of the those animation. But you you're gonna see me. Uh, it's it's pretty rare that I get stuck in torn. Like if I get stuck in torn, I'm probably like ju just sleeping at this moment in my head. It just made no sense to get stuck in torn after a couple run. It, you're gonna see it's just going to a straight line. So the bus is almost always jumping backwards. So just get ready for that at the start. You're gonna see we had enough uh cc into this run so it's why i use the fire kick and uh, the essence rupture because if i was thinking that we are not enough ccs i would be putting vines and scream and look how like i put the the fortify sacred ground just to put the fortify on my teammate and then i go void blade the I don't really need to to keep eating them. Like the void gauntlet, look, the, I pop the void color aura around me, and that void color aura gonna do another heal. So you just go in there, put a sacred, heal someone if you need to, then drop your void blade and and hit almost till the end of the ad phase. Maybe you're gonna put another sacred ground if the mob move, but I don't think. Uh, you're supposed to put more like than two sacred grounds during the ads phase like it, it lasts long enough and during that time you can just go and do whatever you want uh, when, when your teammate take damage you just roll backward you do a splash of light bang to regain and you go back to void blade there's no reason to do uh, almost anything else than that uh, divine embrace is a really good thing but sometimes it's better to just uh, like it it's really situational. I try to keep my screen into the direction of the bus and the direction where there's the most ads so I can dodge it when it comes to me or if there's anything. What is really important into this is a bit of mano management because if you just spam too much uh, rupture for no reason or whatever, you can lack of mana, so like, uh, yeah, try to not put too much oblivion on top of each other. Put it when it's over, uh, and try to remember the time of your cooldown too. And you can put a mana potion uh, into your inventory. It's just that while you're drinking a mana potion, you're you're not eating anything. You see, the the void color is so strong when everyone is stacked up together. It's gonna help everyone to survive, and with the rupture, everyone is able to leech from the bus. So I feel like the rupture is really, really important. The clumping at this moment is very good, and it's mostly based just on the healer stacking up on on top of, of that. So you see, it's all based on this. I try to hit as much mob as I can with my Void Gauntlet and always backstab when possible. We lost a couple DPS, so uh, we start to have hard time to do the adds phase. You're going to see this bus end is kind of tricky. We are in the red. You see, if the tank was running quicker away from the red, people would have more time to react. But he still did it uh, pretty good on this time. Seriously, good job to the tank on that. And he's like walking backward while bucking. It's kind of funny when you think about it. Is it a fire mage tank? Wait, I think I just realized you have a... No, okay, great sword, sword and shield. I don't know anymore. I think you have a fire staff, sword and shield. He, he probably like a bit of CC, but it still uh, give you the buff, I think, on both weapons. But you see, like right now, the CC would probably kind of help... Uh... So let, let, let's rewind a bit and see why the people died in that place. A lot of stack. 
during the ads phase you need to be watching like keep your screen into the direction of the boss while you're fighting the ads so you can dodge the wave when it's coming to you make sure to use your dodge into the direction of the wave so it's gonna work because if you dodge it into the same wave into the same side as the wave goes it will not do the job they die by the red because they probably don't have enough haste the tank died too because he had not enough haste and maybe with a hatchet he could be like defying death or like with a rapier like just evade or flesh away with a repose but the fire staff make it harder to to play maybe if he was in light armor light tanking with a fire staff that would be making more sense so we don't lose too much on movement while i was giving those it you can see i had the void color aura around me so if the dps instead of being scared what was standing on top of their healer they would probably survive by the void color aura and the rupture that is on the boss you can see right there there was there was trembling he was into the area of effect of my spell and he was hitting the boss. And you can clearly see that his life did not go down like the other. Also, the other healer got down and he did not see it. When you go down as a healer, you better to call it so the other healer know and he can stop being the second healer and start main healing. It just makes sense. Until a moment like that, you need to keep constantly giving some hit on the boss when your health is low to just life leech. The Void Gauntlet have a really nice built-in life leech and with the Essence Rupture, you can life leech even more and then make sure to use that on your, at your advantage. And then you get a Enfeebling when you put the Oblivion on the ground and you hit the mob while being inside of it. So it's really important that you take all this and use it at your advantage with the 45 from the sacred ground stick so yeah this is it for this video if you think i missed some detail uh, just say it i think that the eyes part is a part that the people panic a bit too much like uh, if you have a good headset you're gonna hear th that you're gonna get the eyes and then you can just go hide behind the pillar and if if you just move uh, around the boss while eating it, like just move on the right or the left while eating the boss, you go, it's going to show you that you have the eyes because the eye is going to move with you. It's really hard, easy to see. So then you just use your dodge away to go to the pillar. Try to see where is the pillar before the phase happens. This is really easy to, to, to do. And for the... the that are coming under the ground like the, the red spike that does a circle those they are really easy to dodge to mostly if you have some haste in your build or a ability that help you to evade a bit it help a lot and if you manage to, to use your stamina right you you're gonna be able to gain your stamina uh, while being in the into the circle like you have the time to dodge once and gain a bit of stamina and dodge again gain a bit of stamina and dodge again like it's possible i tried and it worked and you can even do it without moving like i don't recommend to do it but it's possible i did it once so on this i want to thanks everyone for watching make sure to drop a like comment if it's you think it's useful, I wish you a good day. Peace out.